Where there are insufficient occlusal contacts to support a jaw registration, we use wax registration rims. Check for any existing occlusal contacts with shim stock. Try the record blocks in the mouth and check the patient's occlusion. Usually the wax blocks will require some adjustment so that the patient can close together properly. Mark the areas where you think adjustments will need to be made. Remove the record blocks on the mouth and trim accordingly. Try the record block in the mouth and check for occlusal contacts. Continue to adjust until the record block is at the right level. Look for tooth prints in the wax which may be signs that the wax is holding the bite open. Repeat the procedure separately for the lower record block. Record the areas that need to be adjusted and trim the wax accordingly and check the patient's occlusion. Once the record rims have been adjusted separately, they need to be tried in together. It may be necessary at this stage to carry out further reduction where the wax rims interfere with each other. Check again to see that the occlusal contacts have been retained. Sometimes it's necessary to trim the acrylic base plate where it may interfere at the back of the mouth. Ensure that the casts match together correctly before your registration. Place locating grooves into the wax blocks before proceeding with the face bow. Place the upper rim into the mouth, load the bite fork with bite registration material in three places. Carefully place the bite fork into the mouth so that it's supported by the occlusal rim and make sure that it is placed in the midline. Once the bite registration material has set, it can be removed from the mouth. Excess jaw registration material may prevent the cast seating correctly against the bite fork and needs to be removed with a sharp scalpel. After trimming the excess material, check that the cast sits properly on the bite fork record. Place the record rim and bite fork record back into the mouth before assembling the face bow. Ask the patient to support the underside of the bite fork record against the upper arch. Attach the jig and the ear bow to the bite fork. Ensure that the reference points are located in the ear canal and on nasium. Tighten the face bow assembly properly before removing it from the mouth. Detach the bite jig from the ear bow apparatus before transferring it to the laboratory. Before making the interocclusal record, cut locating grooves into the lower rim. Load the lower rim with bite registration material. Place the lower rim on the lower jaw. The upper rim has already been inserted and needs to be supported while the patient closes together. When the paste is set, remove the record rims from the mouth. Check that the jaw registration allows the cast to match together properly. Excess material may need to be removed. As you trim excess material, you may find that the bite record will fall away from the record block. 
Here, the locating grooves will allow you to reposition the record on the block. After trimming the bite record, it's important to try it again in the patient's mouth. At this stage, any errors can be corrected. Check that the casts fit together and are supported properly by the jaw registration. Disinfect the bite fork for 10 minutes before packaging it and sending it to the laboratory.